The Mule and Nothing But The Mule. That's what's coming up right after this. So I thought tonight I would um, do a video that is going to focus on one of my all-time current still um, Southern Rock slash jam bands. Now, um, my generation personally was not the one that, you know, was much into the Grateful Dead. So honestly, I've never been much into that band. But they're one of those bands that everybody knows is a jam band and they go out and you know play long concerts jam you know bootlegs galore um you had a lot of other bands like that in the 70s and and one of which was the almond brothers band um you could find you know four disc sets of their concerts and stuff anyway they were real popular in the 70s <laughs> in uh, the late 80s 89 they got back together uh did some reunion shows and they brought in a fellow by the name of Warren Haynes on guitar and vocals. Well, in, as a band kind of did a few few years there in between things, uh, the Warren, the guitar player and the bass player, uh, got together with the drummer and did a little trio, uh, kind of like the 70s trio stuff um, that they enjoyed growing up, um, kind of the jam band stuff. And they did a project called Government Mule. They um, did some live shows, and then they eventually, in 95, they got together in 94. In 95, they released their first album called Cover Mule. Um, so they put out their first album, and I guess it got them some notoriety, but they were still doing the whole Allman Brothers thing. Uh, I guess eventually, it was around 97, when the Allman Brothers, uh, they left the Allman Brothers and decided to focus full-time on Government Mule. Now, I did not discover the, discover the band until their second album. Well, before I get there, this this was released, like I said, in 95. The band got together in 94. In 94, they recorded, an al recorded some stuff, which did end up being most of the songs on this album. With just this year or last year? Well, 2016. They released this, the, uh, the Tell Star Sessions. Basically, this is a 1994 recording where the band got together and recorded a bunch of songs, most of all, which ended up on the first album. So it's kind of like having a different version of the first album, um, some different takes and stuff. Um, so this is it, this is really good. Now this was just like I say, recently released, so that's kind of a, a archival issue. Um, the band is known for, aside from just you know being a solid hard rock, southern rock type band, they like bands before them, like the Grateful Dead and stuff, do concerts, do long concerts, do special shows and stuff like that. So um, one of their, their first live album was called Live at Roseland Ballroom, and I, I forget who they were opening for, I just read it too. They were opening for somebody, and this is like a, a one set basically. But then they started doing things where every year they would put on special concerts on New Year's and, and they would uh, you know be a long show. They were also doing special things uh, like on Halloween. So we'll see some of that as we go through their uh, material. But this was the first live album that came out when, when they were uh, still in their early days. They do release a lot of material. Um, so aside from studio albums, there are a lot of live albums. This is the Georgia bootleg box set. This was recorded in 96. So again, this is right around the, after the first album. This is three different shows in Georgia. They're more or less bootlegs, but they sound really good. They are released by the band. Each show is a double disc. So you got basically six discs here to incorporate the three shows. <coughs> I had had my eye on this box set for quite a while, but you know the price was always up into the four thirty forty dollar range. Well, then I found one that 
literally just a couple months ago where the guy was selling it for like $12 and this is why. The box that it's contained in, you can see it's kind of shredded. I'm like, uh, I don't care. The CDs are in perfect condition. So, score! Got that finally. Now, I did not discover the band until the second album, Dose. A friend of mine turned me on to them and I fell in love with it. This was the album that I just wore out. Loved it. And then I went back at the first album. Fell in love with that. So, this is the, the, these first two albums are really what got me. This came out in 98. Well, let me also mention, I have been getting some of the vinyl. Here's the Telstar Sessions, the vinyl. That's the one I said that just came out two years ago. Um, it's a double disc. It's, you know, white vinyl, really nice. I scored a copy of this on Amazon. I think it was like, it was unreal. It was like 10 10 or $12. I couldn't pass it up. Two, you know, two vinyls. Anyway, and it was still a new release. It was a new issue. So, anyway, as I said, they go through and they do these live shows. So, New Year's 1998. Government Mule live with a little help from our friends. This is the deluxe edition of this. There is a two set. I think it's a two disc version. This is a four disc version. And it's in a neat little spiral book. It's got, you know, all kinds of photos and some information about the songs and who played on it because there's a lot of guests they got this you know it's a long four hour show and they got all kinds of guest musicians that come out and help them people from like the Allman Brothers and, and, and other similarly related bands um, this is recorded you know in Atlanta Georgia so this is when they started again doing all of these New Year's shows which were really big extravagant things where they play like a bunch of songs you know a bunch before New Year's and then they would play uh, sets after New Year's um, this was 1998, 80, 80, 98, 99 New Year's year. And then they did it again, of course, the 99, 2000. This is called Millennium, turning to the Millennium. Um, and again, it's a three disc set. Their live stuff sounds really good. They're really good live, and they're they're always changing it up. And and uh, you know, and it's not like they're just doing a lot of jamming. The songs are are there, but there are some songs they may go on for 12, 13 minutes. So. Um, so they, then they had this one. This only recently came out. So they recently, you know, came out. Uh, okay, 2010. Um, but it's a recording from the 99, 2000 year. Now, Life Before Insanity, their 2000 release. Um, this, when I got this, was became my favorite album for the longest time. And and still, if I were to go back and hand one one government mule cd to somebody to check out this would be the one because this is still one of my favorites there's just so many classic songs on here that i that really just hit me so um you know if you really just want to check them out check out this and this was a pretty critically acclaimed album even though the first two did really well this one kind of you know really made a mark for them now sadly right after this album was recorded and released their bass player was found dead uh, I don't know the whole details of how he passed away, but he passed away. So the three-piece band, you know, they, it kind of sh shook them because they are missing their one of the lifeblood of the band. So when they came back for another album called The Deep End, this is volume one, what they did is the two remaining guys came in with a bunch of different bass players. So this is kind of like a Together With Friends type thing where almost every song has a different bass player, lots of guests kind of a tribute to the original bass player because it brought in a lot of bass players that he uh, had enjoyed and or were influenced by. Um, so there's Roger Glover from Deep Purple and there's a lot of people in here and, and I don't even, I recognize some of the names but couldn't tell you what band they're from. Uh, Jack Bruce. Some of these are hard to read because it's Bootsy Collins. Anyway, Lots of, and then lots of other guests on here, uh, singers, I mean, you know, just different people playing Jerry Cantrell. Um, anyway, so it's kind of like it together with friends. They got together and did this. Uh, it's a double set. This is a video, a DVD, kind of like a making of, um, and then the audio. And then they released a second one, Deep in Volume 2. Again, lots of different bass players. All new songs here, two, two, basically like two new albums. Um, Les Claypool, 
Uh, I'm sure some of you bass players will be familiar with him. And, of course, any Metallica fans out there, it's got Jason Newstead on here, too. Um, Chris Squire. Like I said, I don't recognize a lot of the names, but just a lot of you know famous people played on here with them. Um, two full albums. Again, this one also, double set. It's got another DVD in there. Uh, so these are great. This is where they, they, they hadn't settled on a new bass player, and actually I think they went, they've went they gone along with different bass players over the years uh, for quite a while before I think they finally do have a settled-in bass player. Um, shortly after that, live in concert, the deepest end, and even uh, Jason Newstead plays on here too. A lot of the bass players came in. Um, uh, Les Claypool, Roger Glover, Paul Jackson, Jason Newstead. I mean, there's like t Victor Wooten. Um lots of lots and lots of people plus a lot of other people so this is kind of and again this is a long concert it's got it's a double cd dvd release um i remember showing a friend of mine this and he said man i love that concert just the, the quality the sound the band is at the top of their game just a great show then we get back into where they're settling down with deja voodoo and again another great album um all their stuff, while their style never changes very much, while the style is very similar from album to album, it doesn't get repetitively boring like some bands may do. I, the songs still grab me. Um, yeah, it's just good sometimes to just kick in some kind of grooving hard rock, just kind of laid back. It's not bluesy like the like a three chord blues. It's just got that, you know, uh, laid back at times you know kind of bluesy feel when they get into the jam thing but when they on the studio albums it's it's straightforward hard rock hits that are just really good and they they really got a you know they got a good groove they got some time changes and stuff it's not like it's just uh it can get real you know repetitive um so anyway great album there followed up by high and mighty another great album i don't know what i can say but i mean you know if you haven't heard of them then you know just they're all great but um if you have heard of them, then you know I'm sure people have their favorites and stuff. Um, but the, these, this is what is what year is this? Two, I got them right here, 2006. So we're back, we're up into 2006 here. This is just a little five, six song. Uh, it's you know Mule and Easy Street. Uh, it's kind of like a little uh, show, live show from the from that last album. <clears throat> Mighty High. As you can tell from the cover. You know, it kind of goes into a little reggae feel here. Now, I have to say, out of all of the Government Mule albums, and out of all of my love for Government Mule, this song is probably the one I pass up the most. Some songs on here just do nothing for me. Some of the reggae stuff on here, some of the songs are forever, and they're just noisy, just uh, kind of repetitive reggae type feel. There are some good songs intertwined in there. But overall, I find myself skipping through a lot of this album. And, and it, you know, it's kind of sad to say that, but there's a lot of different people featured on here uh, at times. And it's just, it's kind of like they're in a different little style here. And this is the one that I look at and usually pass by or listen to a little less. Now, like I said, um, they do a lot of concerts on New Year's and they do a lot of these multiple hour shows. Well, they also do things on... Halloween. I believe this was a Halloween one. Um, yeah, Halloween 2007. So they do these special shows, and what they tend to do on some of these shows is not do their own music, but kind of do uh, cover type stuff. They just kind of, hey, let's do something different. So here we are, Halloween 2007, and it's called the uh, Holy Haunted House, and this is mainly uh, Led Zeppelin covers. Um, it's a two disc set. This is kind of I think I, I forget where I bought it from, but it's not like a, a in-store release. It's sort of something you buy from the band. Um, it was a special. So the first disc is kind of most of their stuff, and then the second disc is uh, Led Zeppelin covers. Song remains the same. The rain song, Over the Hills and Far Away, you know, uh, the ocean, things like that. So um, this is kind of neat, kind of a, a special little thing. And they, I'm going to show some other ones in in a minute. And then we bump into, what is this, 2009's By the Thread. Uh, again, just solid, really good stuff. They never seem to uh, leave me with a bad taste, except for that last album that was the reggae one. That's kind of weird. But anyway, 
Shout 2013. This is a cool uh, double disc set. The thing that's interesting about this is you got one disc is the band. Great stuff. The second disc is all the same songs, but they went back and had um, other people like sing on them. So it's kind of like it's a different feel for the same songs. Um, ben Harper, Elvis Costello, Dr. John, Jim James, uh, Ty Taylor, Dave Matthews. Anyway, so that's kind of neat. Um, I'm not sure if there's just, there may, I think there may just be a single set out there that's just a regular band thing, but this is the, I always go for deluxe sets. I always like the bonuses. So this is the second disc set. Now, one of the first things I started doing early last year when I was buying vinyl is I started focusing on, on buying some of their vinyl because, again, they're one of my favorite bands. I already showed the Telstar. This one I was able to grab about a year ago um, for a really good price. And then I, this is another one. I don't know if this was Halloween shows or what, but this album, it, it was released as two volumes and, in America. But then overseas, this is the English England edition. European exclusive edition they put both volume one and volume two vinyl two two vinyls in one set and it's called stone side of the mule volume one and two this is all Rolling Stone songs so it's a double vinyl set um, I don't know if this was a I don't think this is a single show but I have a feeling this is probably one of those Halloween shows where they did Rolling Stones it does have dates on here 2019 and 2015 so I'm thinking the might have been you know some cover tunes from 2009 but then the bulk of it's 2015 um just great stuff um they stay pretty true to the stones but yet you know have a little bit of their flair to it um i'm not a huge stones fan i mean obviously i know the hits i don't really own any of their stuff never been a big fan but i love the way the stones are done here so anyway and this was another one i think i got on amazon it's a two vinyl it's a european import i think i got this for like 15 bucks i couldn't believe it it was unbelievable because if you try to buy volume one or volume two separately they're like 20 bucks a piece so i don't know how i got that it was brand new and it was beautiful i do have buy the thread um so i have that on vinyl i don't have shout which was the other one that's one of the ones i'm missing so then in more recent years they've done these and, and they've come out on cd regular set deluxe edition and super deluxe edition with four discs again because they play for hours and hours um i'd have to go back and look up it to remember exactly you know if this was one of those halloween type shows or whatever but the dub side of the mule it's government mule but they got the reggae guy singing with them from the other album and he appears on certain songs and he sings pretty much this whole album and yeah i guess it was it was well there's a happy new year song on here um anyway not my favorite album it's totally feels different um aside yeah most all the songs on here are it's kind of like them doing somebody else's songs but it's all kind of a reggae feel <clears throat> this one i do believe was halloween a halloween show where they call it this is called the dark side of the mule and this is all pink floyd it's a double album set where they're doing pink floyd stuff um one of these days pigs on the wing part two comfortably numb shine on you crazy diamond you know all the great money wish you were here so again they're having fun doing somebody else's music and they do it well that leads us to their most recent album, which I do not have on CD because I bought it on vinyl, but I did get a download of it, including the, uh, I don't think I have a download of the actual deluxe edition. I've been listening to it on Spotify. Deluxe edition has a couple extra songs. Always frustrates me. Anyway, this one's called Revolution Come, Revolution Go. It's a double vinyl, again. Just solid, solid stuff. Uh, this was 2017, so this is last year. Um, I actually, this was a, fund, a crowd fundraiser you know one of those crowdfunding things so i purchased this early on you know it's kind of a gripe let me gripe a little bit here so a crowdfunding so i go on a crowdfunding and i pay money to help them put the album out they send me a digital download but and they send you the tracks but then they turn around and release a deluxe edition that's got like four or five extra bonus tracks well there's no way for me to get those because i bought the vinyl 
unless they expect me to go out and buy the deluxe edition of the CD. So it just seems when bands do that, and you're paying more for the vinyl than the person who paid for the CD or for the deluxe CD, I think the person who paid the, all this extra money for the vinyl should get the whole deluxe CD, should be able to download those bonus tracks. They should be available in some format. Um, it's just frustrating when bands do that. I mean, I'm paying more money than the other person, but yet I'm getting less than the other person. Um, it's just one of those pet peeves that kind of irritates me. Anyway, so that's it in a nutshell. I do have, I found this. This is a Warren Haynes uh, solo album. It's actually not a solo album. It's him with the, it's called Ashes and Dust featuring Railroad Earth. This is really, it's kind of him playing with this other band, or it's kind of uh, almost, I don't want to say bluegrass, very acoustic kind of different. It's not Government Mule. This is Warren Haynes. And the reason I bought this aside from the fact that I like it. Warren Haynes has some solo albums and I have some of that too. I just didn't bring them here. Um, FYE. One of those st stores in the mall. They're a standalone store. We got them around here. If you don't, it's called For Your Entertainment or FYE. It's your chain record store. The prices are outrageous. I rarely ever buy. I'll go in there and flip through things. I just, uh, I can't it's not like a little mom and pop record store. It's big business, and you know you'll go in there and buy these albums for like forty bucks or I forget. I saw they had all the Kiss albums in there, and they were all like forty-four dollars for these single albums. Where everywhere else they're selling them for like twenty something. I just uh, I can't stand the big businesses like that. But I'll go in there and flip through them if we're next door shopping somewhere else. I swing by and flip through just to get an idea of what's out there. This was in their fifty percent off bin. It was thirty-four dollars, so I got it for seventeen. It's a double vinyl brand new i just i couldn't pass up i'm like 17 dollars i'll pay but you know 30 something dollars for that i'm not gonna pay anyway government mule check them out if you haven't um yes i know a lot of the stuff i show tends to be metal this is one you know i have a lot of tastes and this is one of my favorite bluesy rock bands just solid like i said solid grooving hard rock and i just like to you know kick them back and 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 they just get you going, get your toe tapping, and it's good stuff. Check them out if you haven't. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and subscribe. And see you next time. Rock on.